There are many different kinds of electric motors, but one of the cheapest, most common, and most useful is the brushed permanent magnet DC motor. And like most electric motors, it operates on the principle that a current flowing through a magnetic field creates a force on the wire carrying the current. So let's look at an example of this. Let's say that we have uh, two magnets here. One I'll call north and the other is south. Make it three dimensional. And this creates a magnetic field flowing from north to south and I'm going to call that B and I'm going to make it a vector so that it has a magnitude and a direction. Now if I have a current carrier flowing through here, so make it a wire, and there's a current I flowing along that wire, and again I'll make that a vector to indicate magnitude and direction, x, y, z. Then Lorentz's force law tells us that the force experienced by the conductor is equal to F is equal to L times I cross B. Okay. L here is the length of the conductor, I is the magnitude and direction of the current, and B here is the direction of the magnetic field, and F is the resulting force acting on the conductor. So by using the right-hand rule here, taking the cross product of these two directions, tells us that the force acting on this conductor is in the downward direction. And it's proportional to the amount of current flowing through the, the magnetic field, the strength of the magnetic field, as well as the length of the conductor. So this is the basic rule that controls how all electric motors, or essentially all electric motors, work. Now let's see how we can turn this concept into a motor. So now let's say that instead of having just a current carrier flowing in one direction through the magnetic field, we replace it with a loop. And so now the current flows into the magnetic field in this direction, turns around, and comes back out. Well, we can look at that end on. So here's north. South, our magnetic field is flowing from north to south. And if I look at the torque, or I'm sorry, the force acting on the uh, conductor pointing in this direction, just like as we saw before, there's a force acting down. And because this direction is reversed, now we have the uh, current coming towards me. The force on that conductor, that end of the conductor, is up. Now if we constrain this loop here so that it can rotate about a center line here, and I'll draw that center here in our end on view. And then if we look at the, uh, the torque that's created by these two forces, I'm going to call this distance here between the center of the loop and the conductor, I'll call that a distance D. And let's say the scalar force acting here is F. Then the torque that we create by these two forces is just 2D times F, because we get a D times F for each of these. Now if we rotate this to a different angle, and now I call this angle here theta, then I can write the torque as Torque is equal to 2 df times cosine theta. And this is what's going to allow us to create a torque uh, to drive a motor. And we'll see in the next video in more detail how that works.